Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. So last week you saw us receive the devastating news that there was a crack in our rigging, literally days before we were about to set sail across the Pacific Ocean to French Polynesia. There was nothing available in Mexico, so I'd sourced a full replacement from the US, which was going to take about 10 days to arrive. So we just got on with other jobs such as installing our brand new Starlink Maritime package supplied by FMC GlobalSat. Hurricane Irma. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? So we've just left the dock, gonna head back to Paradise Village. Obviously our entire plans have now changed. I'm feeling really uh, bad for the crew. Um, everyone's sort of flowing in, expecting to leave, and this is gonna hold us up at least a week. You know, worst case scenario, this could have saved someone's life. If the rig came down and uh, landed on somebody or took someone out, um, you know, how devastating would that be? So I think it's worth just waiting around for the extra week and a half or whatever. It just sucks, man. We were, we were literally about to clear out on Wednesday. So another setback for Parlay. But I have to look at this as a blessing in disguise. Oh, the other thing is that we went to the, um, the meeting last night with Mike, the weather guru. He's saying, um, obviously the later we leave it, the worse the weather's gonna be. So that sucks as well. There's a weather window coming up on Wednesday when we were gonna leave. Um, and we don't know when the next one will be. It was the only thing that was worrying me about crossing, because it's the only thing that we have never touched on the boat. So it's kind of a shit thing that we have to leave later, but everything happens for a reason. This wax is probably the best wax I've ever used. Um, I work on super yachts as a bosun and I would definitely use this product and recommend it to my future yachts. So all you do is put a pea size amount on your pad, evenly dispersed, spread it out, and wax it. After that, you just buff it off and it comes out super shiny. Even just in one go. Wax on, wax off. Okay, so the boys have finally got around to installing the dinghy wheels sent to us by Danard Marine. We're gonna do a review on them because the ones we had, the brand shall remain unspoken, were horrible. They bent the bracket. Um, just completely impractical. These ones look so solid. Um, big bracket, the guys have um, drilled through the transom. It's got this solid aluminium bracket that the wheel just sort of slides up and into, and then you just slide it up and around, and in from the bottom, it just looks practical. We're not, we're not gonna review it yet until it's installed, but the guys are nearly done. They're just gonna splurge some silicon around and uh, get her done. Oh, the big gun! Oh, yeah. Look how solid that is. Our last ones, when, when it would do that, it actually bent the frame of the wheels there. When you're moving that, just the actual tires are moving. Good job again. Yeah, Shoot. boy. Okay, so another big project that we're about to try get done before we leave is replace one of our manual winches with an electric winch. So we've decided to go with a Selden electric winch. Um, this winch here, no matter what we do, we've taken it apart, we've greased it, it's always just so stiff. And this controls a lot of our halyards. We're gonna be hoisting and, and um, bringing down sails the entire way across the Pacific. It's a lot of sail changes. I've decided to just upgrade and go with an electric winch here. 
I am so impressed with uh, the kit that Selden sent. I basically don't need anything. It's all in the boxes. Uh, the manual is incredible. I'll show you now. It's just all perfectly laid out as to how to install all of this stuff. This is for multiple systems. The beauty of this is that with one power supply unit, you can power up multiple winches. So we're gonna mount this down in this cabin here and everything will branch off that eventually. So we're gonna start from the batteries and go through this, uh, this breaker, 100 amp breaker, and go to the power supply unit. That's gonna take the 12 volts and actually change it to 42 volts. But that high voltage means we can have smaller gauge wires. And that goes to the motor control unit. And then from this motor control unit, it goes to the electric winch. So this electric winch here, the beauty of it is that the motor is actually inside it. And then you've got the, they call it the backbone, which is these cables, which helps everything talk to each other. From the backbone, we've got one coming out to the motor control unit. And then from the motor control unit, we've got, got one coming out to the switches. Two speeds, slow, fast. We're gonna mount those on the deck somewhere. Dr. Steven over here is gonna take his... <laughs> <laughs> Take over uh, this project here. It has to work when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so the most time consuming part of any large electrical install is running the wires, which we won't bore you with, but it took hours. The mounting holes for the new winch were different to the old ones, so we epoxied up the old holes, and while they were drying, we got ready to drill the holes with the new switches. Does it feel like to drill through parlay? Terrifying. <laughs> Wasn't too bad? Yeah, that's the easy part. <laughs> We're too high. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know this whole saw column? So the first thing I did when I got on parlay is drill holes in it. Never a dull moment. No. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We haven't left the dock yet. And on top of that, he pranked you. Yes. Yeah. Did your heart skip a beat? Well, he measured it, so ah. <laughs> he wasn't going to be able to blame me. Stephen is our patron who was chosen to sail across the Pacific with us. Now that we were delayed, he didn't even hesitate to offer to help us out with boat jobs. He was a little taken aback by the fact that his first task was to drill holes throughout the flybridge. But with his background, I felt it would be a breeze for him. And I was right. The winch was installed in no time. Um, we've just finished wiring up the motor control unit. And this is power out going to the actual winch. And this is our backbone network. So we're gonna we'll put this on a little wooden plate here and we're gonna mount that inside here. Accessible but out of the way. Um, but now we're gonna run the cables down to the PSU. Let's go. So we have just run all the cables all the way down into the battery compartment. We've wired up the power supply unit. We use four gauge wire to go from the batteries to the power supply unit. Run it through a 100 amp breaker. So we'll just flip the breaker on now and uh, she should fire up. Okay, so now that Precision have given us all these beautiful new lines and also a code D, we need to run another halyard. <laughs> he just walked straight into the boom. <laughs> you heard uh, We only have one on this side and we have three on the other side. So we're gonna put this one on this side here, but we have to stagger them. We don't wanna put this at the same height as any of the other ones. And we also don't want to put it in the same line this way as any of the other ones. Just to make sure that we don't compromise the strength of the mast. I'll actually put one at this height. So it's between this one and that one on the other side. And it's not in line with this one or with the other two on the other side. So that's where she's going. Oh shit. That's legit. Ugh. 
This is the tool of all tools. Go in. Oh, got it. First go. Come on, baby. Yeah. Got it. Look at that. How pretty. Okay, so today we have to tighten the multi-hole nets. We put them on in Guatemala like three years ago, but we haven't had to tighten them and they aren't, they don't even look like they're fading, they're not marked after three years. But yeah, today we're gonna use this little tool, like that, and then probably just grab this one, like that. Bang, bang, bang. What do you guys think of this? Safe or not safe? That brand new Tohatu for the new little dinghy. Uh, we've got to break it in for 10 hours. And as you know, we're about to cross the Pacific, so um, I want to get as much of that done now as I can so that in the mark cases we can just start using it. So I've got it at the dock, I've got to do half throttle for two hours, so just set it up on a little line here, well, and a safety line, just getting the hours put through it. I don't see a problem with that. As long as that uh, safety line's on there, I mean, it's a Dyneema line, but if it did snap, uh, you got the safety. Otherwise, it would go flying through the marina at half speed, which is fast when there's no one in it. Well, we've been extremely spoilt here at Palais Revival. A company called FMC Global Sat have chosen us to trial and review the Starlink Maritime system. But here it is. This is the Maritime dish. It doesn't have to move like these other ones. We have the RV one right now, but it's not, it's gonna be discontinued. It actually is already meant to be discontinued. People are not using them as they should be used, including us, and we've been getting away with it. But as soon as we leave the coast of Mexico, it is no longer going to function so we had to think of another solution and as a YouTube channel we use a lot of internet and to keep you guys happy we need to do weekly episodes so I happened to meet Bob in uh, Miami at the Miami Boat Show and he said he can get us one of these we actually mount it on an angle so the, the rain doesn't collect on top of it FMC are a enterprise grade solutions company that provide um, a tailored plan for your boat so this is the peplink. So this is part of their plan that they've provided for us is it's gonna go from the antenna to the power supply. When I move, you move the camera with me. So that, uh, <laughs> you get a nice even shot. We're gonna put the power supply in here. And then from there, we're gonna do a short run inside the boat to the, ro to the router. We've got a stainless steel guy working on a mount for it on the edge of the solar panel there now. Let's get into it. Let's move the solar panel so we can start running some cables. Make sure you watch until the very end, we will do a direct comparison between the Maritime and the RV versions. So we'll see what the difference is. So this here is called the power supply unit. And it's going to take the 110 volts and send it from here out to the antenna. We've decided that we're going to punch a hole in the back of this cupboard and all the wires are going to run down and the modem. Is it called a modem? Router. Router. It's gonna go right there and make it look more neat, more professional, because that's what I am. Just like that. So we've got two Wi Fi antennas, two cell phone antennas. It's so got a GPS signal. This is the last stage here. That's the antenna. This is the router. And this is the power. So as we finished off the wiring, the new antenna mount arrived made out of stainless steel 316. It arrived looking beautiful and polished and they just welded one support underneath in case we hit some crazy weather. 
We then mounted the aluminium bracket for the antenna onto the stainless steel using the rubber grommets that they supplied to avoid galvanic corrosion. We then drilled through the coach roof to pick up the cable from the power supply, which also came with a waterproof gland. There goes Starlink. Okay, I've just finished wiring up the Starlink. So this guy here was our battery charger, but now we have a Victron charger inverter. So we, it's all done downstairs and actually controlled here. Um, so this became redundant. So I thought, perfect, I'll use the battery charger breaker to power up the Starlink antenna and the whole system. So that was the last of the wiring. So there we have it. We just put the solar panel back into place. Starlink's in, bolted in. Bracket looks good, looks perfect. Okay, so I've just um, tapped into the Pepwave modem. I've done quite a bit of this stuff on Supiot, so I'm fairly familiar with this. Um, this enables me to choose between Starlink or a SIM card. So this is Starlink Maritime. So 100 megabits per second, that's pretty phenomenal. Now I'm gonna go back onto Parallel Normal, which is the uh, RV version. And we'll do another another speed test now. I saw an average of about 30 maybe. Yeah, 29. So the Maritime right now has priority. It's getting priority over all of the residential units. It's getting priority over all the RV units. Um, and it is, you've just seen the result, it's three times faster than our RV unit. Pretty freaking happy with that. Uh, that's the first test that we've done and we're going to be testing this across the entire Pacific Ocean, starting from Mexico all the way to New Zealand. This is exciting. This is so exciting. So if you guys are interested in um, looking into this yourself, you can just go to FMC Global Sats website. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you, FMC. We feel very, very lucky. Don't think that we're taking this for granted, guys. I know we're spoiled by this, um, and we're very grateful. Yeah, absolute game changer. As you can tell, I was beyond excited about our new gear. Without this, we would not have been able to upload episodes in the Pacific or do posts on Instagram and Facebook for you all, let alone the safety implications of having that much connectivity out there to check weather and communicate with the outside world anytime, anywhere. The packages provided by FMC start at only a few hundred dollars, so contact them if interested as they can get you a better deal than Starlink themselves.